There we are. Hello and welcome to Each Backyard, my YouTube channel. We are up bright and early on this beautiful... What was that? Was that a chicken? It was. The hens can hear me talking. They love me. It might just be for my excellent food. Nonetheless, we'll see if a few people jump on this morning. This morning we're going to do a few normal Sunday morning things to include spending some time with the sweet little lionhead bunnies, going in and seeing the permaculture chickens. In fact, we'll be letting them out of the coop here momentarily. We're also going to plant and talk about planting moringa seeds. Look at these little moringa seeds. Welcome to the stream. And first to comment. If you'd like to support this YouTube channel, go ahead to Amazon and, well, use one of the links on the channel to get to Amazon. And that is an affiliate link and it'll support the channel. If you like this kind of content, subscribe, click the thumbs up button. That gives me indication you like this type of content and to make more of it. Okay, so what, what to do, what to do? I'd say we're gonna let the chickens out first. Let's get that and I wanna show my system. I figured out the final gap that I need to do to this system to make it perfect. And uh, you can see I've got this simple wire door. Everything in this is about simplicity. Everything in my setup here is intended to be simple, including my little chicken coop, which I built myself. Hey, chickies. Yes, they would like to get out. All right, first we're gonna check to make sure that the ah, spider web the door is up and well it is yeah I'll, well, a little bit problematic using this gimbal okay I'm gonna switch this around so you can get a more comfortable angle okay let's execute the morning ritual oh gee whiz they really do get much more vocal in the morning that's one that's two. Because they know what's about to happen. And my process is to come in here, shut the door. Look at those beautiful, healthy birds. Hmm. We've got a little bit of a cobweb starting there. Don't want that. All right, let's let you out and see what the Sunday has to offer. First out, Ponzi. Hello, Top Hen. Hello, Sally the Sea Monster. She is for chicken. Hey there, Chicken Joe. And hello, Blondie. Last one out, last but not least. Such a pretty chicken. Hey, look at this. Every morning you peck at my toes. Yep, they know what's up now. What I do is I keep them in there so that they all come out at once. What I've noticed is if you can keep them as a flock, they'll follow that top hen right in there. Now. The last piece of fixing this system is this little gap in the fence I have here next to this pigeon pea. And they will tend to go in there, and that's no good. Now i got to chase them behind the net. Other than that, they're good. But if I just kind of physically block them, encourage them, I swing the door right open, and let's see if we can have chicken success. In a way, this is a way of telling how successful the day will be. Here we go. Ready? Go. Oops. Positive motion. Oh, 
area. They usually get frisky right about now, spreading their wings. Reminding the pecking order. <laughs> when are you little hens gonna start laying eggs? That's my question. Come on, come on. They like this area. They don't get to explore it much, but there they are. All of them. Able to free range. <laughs> Go find all the fruit that's dropped since last night. See if we can find them a fruit to eat. Let's see what's growing back here. There might be a couple brown turkey figs to be had. A little drink of water. And I put down all these mango leaves. You can see there's a thick layer of mango leaves. That's from mango branches I cut down. You know, we're getting ready for the hurricanes to get windy. We had a few near misses already. So I've been processing a lot of mango branches. Mango is the kind of fruit tree you want to trim after you pick the fruit to encourage branching. Eesh. Many, many spider webs back in here right now. It's all a classic eat your backyard moment is to get spider webbed in the face. Now it looks like the end of this fig season has arrived. And you can see that the, the leaves end up getting this rust on it. You can treat this. There are various ways. I don't. Hmm. Chickens don't mind it, that's for sure. What you got there? Oh, that's a piece of that pizza crust from last night, isn't it? Yes. Hey, don't peck my phone. Yeah, the chickens love the fig leaves. There's nothing goes unwasted. I mean, nothing. <laughs> I just, opposite of what I meant to say. Nothing goes wasted. You have chickens because they'll eat it just about anything, but they'll definitely eat fig leaves. Ooh, top hand arrived. Hold on, I'm in charge around here. Hey, trying to eat me? I think these Plymouth rock birds are just so beautiful. They both are for sure, but. But they are in charge. They're without a doubt the dominant birds. You can see these other two are kind of wondering if they should get involved. And, the, and you put it towards them, they'll eat it, but they don't want to violate the sacred pecking order. All right. I thought maybe a Barbados cherry or two would be popping. I did see a couple on the ground, so that means they're up high. I can see quite a few up higher. That's the thing. This this is such a massive Barbados cherry tree I'm under, bush. It's now gotten up to the point where getting to the fruit can be a climb. I'm not too crazy about that, actually. But the chickens don't mind because they'll take them when they're nice and ripe and drop down to the ground. How you doing, little girl? All right, so the chickens are now doing what they do. Chickens secured. And all it takes is this little three-foot fence to keep them 
end up. Okay, sorry, I missed the comment. Karen Hills Homestead, welcome. I was checking out your YouTube channel, I love it. I'm trying to expand my uh, reach a bit and checking out some other channels on YouTube and I'm finding one after another that's amazing. Okay, now check this out. This is where I piled. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. This is where I piled the mango branches, which I trimmed last night. I suffered many mosquito bites to do this, which uh, makes me even more proud of it. <laughs> Ooh, wow, the chickens are getting, uh, getting feisty. But these are Tommy Atkins mango branches, and I cut them down because I have picked all the fruit, and that's, it was actually a little overdue for, for being trimmed because after you pick the fruit, that's when you want to trim it. You're going to have vigorous growth. If you can see on some of these shoots here, like this, you can see all the little buds getting ready to go. It will just absolutely activate. And you can see on this one, the little sprouts already started. That's not what you want, but well, you know, we're not perfect. I'm not a mango tree uh, aficionado, but I pretend to be one. So this is the Tommy Atkins mango tree, and uh, it, it's looking like it should look this time of year. It was probably about another 10 feet taller and uh, maybe about five or so feet wider. And I removed a lot of that growth and that will make it branch and produce even more mangoes next year. Now, what I'm gonna do shortly after I complete all this trimming, I've still got a few next to the house I need to remove, is I will give it ample bunny manure because I have completed the animal component to my yard now. And so I have lots of, uh, there you go, lots of, I need to pressure wash that, Eve. I have lots of manure coming in. So you see, this is no good over the house so I'll, I'll also take this back to about here and uh yeah that'll all come back super strong giving it the bunny man, bunny manure which bunny manure is cool because it's a cold fertilizer you can a cold manure you can just put it straight down on the ground you can see this is something like beach sand that's because i live about uh, you know, four or five blocks from the beach from the ocean atlantic ocean and that shapes how i grow things here for sure because of the salt spray, the windiness, you know, the effect of storms on the coast is amplified. So things like that really shaped what I've done here. Okay. Oh, well, the bunny run. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Decisions, decisions. Bunnies or pigeon peas? Not pigeon peas. Moringa. Moringa. Look at this. I bought this for, I don't know, $10 on Amazon. By the way, if you want to support the channel, go click on the links in the description to Amazon. There are affiliate links, and then uh, that helps us without costing you more. But I got this on there. Uh, you could get any variety of Moringa seed packets, but I have planted so many trees. They're growing all over my yard. And I recently did an experiment where I tried to plant them in some sandy soil like in my yard with a little bit of chicken compost and bunny manure mixed in and I got a 0% success rate. These and all of these were my attempts as well as these. And none of them sprouted. None of them. So that taught me something about growing moringa trees and that is that they are on here, here's an example of one. It did grow. That was started out in regular old loose potting soil. So, and I noticed that at the same time I planted that set of these moringa trees, I also planted one in just a, some old potting soil I had sitting out. And look what happened. It grew. So, this is my little grow table. These little pots I had set up last night in order to do this today see if I can balance the cell phone. Wow. That's actually pretty good. All right, so there's a little bit of a secret here to how you do this. 
I'm gonna, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's probably about right. Just take out the seeds. Yeah. That's seven. And since they have such a high germination rate, I'm only going to plant one in each pot. But the trick here is just to, with your fingernail, remove the shell. And you reveal the little white center. And then the process is just simply push it down. But we'll do that after we get done. But I don't have a fingernail on my other thumb because I smashed it when I was building the chicken coop. It still hasn't regrown yet all the way. another one and I don't think I can have too many moringa because I think they're pretty easy to remove and uh, I'm going to be trimming them quite heavily this also give you a sense of oops well, there goes one of them down the chute let's see here I've got a little seed now I could eat that too but uh Get these growing uh, all this oh wow that one almost looked like it was no good yeah i'm just gonna let that one go these are getting a little bit old now i mean i've had them for maybe three months but i did keep them in a uh, oxygen free thing so okay so i've got five planted we had a couple that dropped, and I'm going to just spray two more out of this bag. I'm going to grow these to be pretty, uh, pretty big before I plant them. Uh, and by that I mean I'll probably let a good uh, four or five leaves grow on each one of the small trees. And I'll show you some small trees here when we're done, just so you get an idea and of where they're at. I show them. I've been showing them quite a bit, just so you can track the progression. But started getting into growing. Moringa trees just last year, and they really are now an important thing in my yard because I'm going to be using the leaves to feed to the bunnies, to feed to the chickens, to make tea for myself. Which, by the way, you can make this. Oh, look at that, that one didn't have anything in it. All right, one more. But the tea you can you can make with the moringa is uh, like a multivitamin. It's very, very high in, in uh, nutrients, potassium, vitamin C, etc. There's a ton of information. I might do a, uh, I might do a video about it. Just to try to teach folks about this amazing thing. For ten dollars, I produce an incredible amount of food, and it's about the food, folks. Have the ability to to provide your own food for you and your family. You won't regret it. it makes you feel good have that capability that's my claim and you see what I'm doing I'm just taking it and poking it down maybe an inch this is regular potting soil purchased at the department store so to speak any loose potting soil will do and that's it. Now I watered it last night, so I'm not going to re uh, water it again. It's plenty wet, and uh, I believe we're going to get something like 100% germination here. We planted lucky seven seeds, so we got seven chances to win. And I've also learned something about planting them in sandy soil filled with uncomposted chicken manure. They're not going to probably make it. Look at these. These are Roselle. Uh, I planted one in each pot, and I didn't water it. And even without watering it, several of them simply sprouted which is incredible. Roselle's another one you got to add to your life. All of these are Roselle. So out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pots of Roselle seeds. I put one seed in each pot because I was so confident they were going to all generate. I got it from a Palm, a Palm Beach Seed Company. I'll put a link down in the description. But anyway, the second time I bought seeds from them and they were really healthy. They sprouted before I even watered them. And then I, last night I watered the pots, so I expect these to, uh, to happen. Let's see, we had five that sprouted without being watered. There must have been a little moisture in the potting soil. And then uh, the remaining four 
will be soon to pop up, I believe. Also, I did another thing here, which is kind of cool, another very easy thing to grow from cuttings. is the mulberry tree. I just, we started growing Persian mulberries here uh, just at the end of last year. And man, that's been incredible. But I have a seven foot tall Persian mulberry tree now as a result of a cutting I got. And the fruit is excellent, much better than the ever bearing, in my opinion, ever bearing mulberry tree. So it's actually gotten big enough, the Persians, to take cuttings. So I took cuttings from them. You can see nice cuttings, two of them. I have a, a couple more I, I put over in the other side of the yard, but now I'll have even more mulberry trees. I love those. I want to actually get a Pakistani mulberry tree, which is got long, very long mulberries, and the fruit's supposed to be very good. I found some at a nursery, and I might go buy them. I don't know. I'd much rather find somebody who has a cutting. Let me know if you have a cutting available of a Persian, of a uh, Pakistani mulberry. If you've got Pakistani, then you've already likely got Everbearing and Persian in your collection. But this is an Everbearing. Everbearing is still very good. I, I do like the Everbearing mulberry. Year-round producer. But you see this one, even just planted in the pot, it's already loaded with fruit. Is that crazy? I planted that maybe a week ago in that pot, that mulberry cutting. So mulberries are just always a winner, as is the star fruit. Here's another moringa. Tamarins. Yeah, so lots going on. Oh no, where I positioned this, oh, I just stepped on this moringa. Oh no, it looks like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree now. We'll see. Give peace a chance. All right, so those moringa should grow well. I'll show you the roselle, roselle full grown. Well, grow, not full grown, growing. <clears throat> this is the roselle right here. It's a type of, of hibiscus. Pretty happy with that. My chickens annihilated the roselle, and that's good to know because the reason they annihilated it was because they are so delicious. I had them all over, and the chickens immediately found them all and ate them when we were free-ranging them in the wider yard. But uh, you can see the redness in the stem. That actually can be used for cordage. It's incredibly good fiber, fibrous stalk. They use it that way commercially. Also, the leaves are zesty, delicious, tangy. I, I love them. It's like a you could eat them as salads, just eat them as a vegetable. And then they produce flowers that taste like cranberries. And then the inside of the flower has pectin in it, which can be used to make jams and so on. So really super cool. Here, I've even tried to grow these moringa in the shade. You can see this one, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. I don't have high hopes that the ones I planted in areas like this are going to do great, but the fact that they have sprouted at all tells me they could probably take a little bit lower light. So I try them everywhere, and when I planted so many trees in pots, I had the opportunity to just place them all over. So you see how they grow in different environments of your yard. Then you can maximize them. Look at that, isn't that healthy? This is another one, Persian mulberry, grew it in the shade. Doing great. That was off a six inch cutting. not even a year ago. And here is a everbearing mulberry that I planted from a very long cutting. Maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago. It's doing quite well. You see, I use these Dracaena as walls from the salt spray. It blocks the salt spray. Without that, my yard would just be cooked every storm. All right, let's go see if the 
go see what's happening in the bunny run. I'd like to let some of these sweet bunnies out and also show you. By the way, having permaculture bunnies, having outdoor bunnies, bunnies that will produce nonstop manure for your garden is very, very easy to do in a place like Florida. All right, let's see. Trying to put it in a place where you can actually see. Hopefully. All right, I'm gonna grab a bunny. As a matter of fact, huh. my wife just gave him some lettuce. You eating lettuce? Yeah, you know, they come right, she comes always right to the front. She knows it's time to get out and exercise and get pets. Don't you, you sweet little bunny. I need two hands to pick these little guys up. I would never want them to fall. Rabbits are actually fairly delicate. All right, I'm going to put it here for a second and go get the rabbits. She's getting much bigger. And this is probably the most active part of the day. When it gets a little warmer in the afternoon, she'll just sleep. But what a gorgeous rabbit. right back to her favorite spot. Rabbit's too fast, can't track it. See that red sugar cane? They've got a wild habitat. And sometimes they've got all these exotic things like lemongrass and sugar cane leaves and they'll just go eat the St. Augustine grass growing through the fence. Mm, sniffing out that sugar cane shoot Cast it up. The most cold tolerant sugar cane. Hey camel. I think I've seen purples, purple sugar canes that it seems like they grow up in Mississippi and Louisiana, fairly far north, so to speak, compared to Florida. All right, let's see what we got here. I, I would say I would look to see what varieties they're growing at sugarcane syrup farms in that area, even northern Florida. But um, I can tell you, I don't think they would be that affected by an occasional freeze. Okay. She might be getting into burrow mode. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, and you can grow sugar cane quite easily in a pot too and just bring it in. That's another good option. If you're, if you're in a place where it's too cold, it'll certainly grow well in a pot. about time for me to process the bunny manure too. Get it into the five gallon buckets. We pressure wash everything, keep the environment clean for the bunnies. What you doing, Penelope? You don't like it under here, I think. I find she hops around a bunch and then she'll come over and want pets. It's interesting to see the personality of rabbits. They're going to stay pretty wild, but she's been around us her whole life. So she's become pretty comfortable. I have not regretted getting these rabbits one bit. The, the whole family loves to interact with them. They've been a really good ad. And then I still went ahead and got the chickens, which are another good ad. It's because rabbits don't lay eggs. See if I can get out old Thumps. Show him to everybody. All right. There she is. <laughs> Your paws are dirty. Everybody, here it is, the Brad Pitt of rabbits, the most famous rabbit on the internet, Thumper. Thumper's a little freaked out right now and I don't want him to jump off. <laughs> relax, Thumpy, relax. Relax. What a gorgeous rabbit you are. Lionhead rabbits are actually related to the, what is it, the uh, cashmere? What do they call those? Not the cashmere. Angora rabbits. The ones that <laughs> so they're incredibly soft. Yeah, their whiskers, they... When it's a little hot like this, they just pant. They breathe. In fact, the female Penelope, she she breathes so fast that you can hear kind of uh, you can hear it. Thumper not as much, but they also also I don't think rabbits fundamentally like to be picked up. I don't think that's a natural feeling for a rabbit at all. <laughs> it's probably the last thing they feel when they're out in the wild is to get picked up by another animal and eaten. So, you know, they, although they'll get used to it, I don't think they ever really like it. You can see he calms down. They're prey animals, so of course they're gonna be forever kind of nervous. I'm not sure if he would jump off the edge of this. You can see he's a little rabbit too, he's not big.
but so soft it's incredible. All right, Thumps, let's put you down. Back to the same hole. Take turns digging the hole. Family feud, what are the top three things rabbits like to do? Dig holes, eat carrots, and sleep. There's one thing a rabbit loves, it's a hidey hole. Hopping away. It's faster than I can track him. It's as fast as a speeding rabbit. <laughs> the funny thing is, Jack got the both these rabbits, they'll actually run with him. If he runs, they'll follow him and run with him. It's uh, interesting. Oh, he's doing the snowplow. Rabbits do this thing where they push the dirt away with both paws. I call it the snowplow. They're very efficient diggers. Piece of crabgrass. Good job, good buddy. blocking his path. So it's interesting, this bunny run was nothing but grass and one fig tree not that long ago. So these pioneer plants that I planted in here, they've had to pioneer through being eaten by chickens and bunnies too, which is kind of cool. The pigeon pea made the mark, so did these other things, but many things didn't. Mulberry trees did not make it because those bunnies and chickens will just eat those down as soon as they, every little green part of it and leave nothing. Fig trees, we planted some in here. Those all got eaten down to nothing. Now I just planted these Dracaena and you can see, well, those were some I cut. I just chopped, chopped them and dropped them, but this was, a, this was a rabbit came in and shouted it. So I don't know if he was just sampling it. That might be the last that he tries of that. We'll see if it makes it. The interesting thing is things like this St. Augustine grass here just grown in from the other side of the fence, oddly enough, becomes a, uh, a great treat for the buns. You got plenty of hay, so you're not. Do you want some? No.
What are you gonna do? <laughs> she might have. You, uh, fun fact about rabbits, they can sleep with their eyes open. She may have just fallen asleep. With grass in her mouth. Okay. Yep. All right. Thumper, where are you digging? Uh oh. This rabbit is active. Now, Thumper, once he gets a wild hair, so to speak, he is not going to want to be necessarily picked up, so I'm going to kind of encourage him to leave that corner. <laughs> now, what do you think is easier to catch, chickens or rabbits? All right, so there, there we have it. A little, little run time for the buns. Probably let them out a little longer later. I'll check on the morning moringa tree. I call this the good morning moringa tree because it's right out here by the chickens. Interesting, a little floppy. I think that's okay though. Yeah, that's doing pretty well. This Hawaiian papaya is really going off out of the pot here. Pretty stoked on that. I'll probably let it grow in the pot, see if it's a male or a female. By the way, I've got a video on how to tell the difference. You want the females. They're the ones that produce the fruit. If you get a male, of course, you get seeds. There's always a male around. So you're going to get some amount of seeds, but... Look at you, hens. Look at you hens. Chicken Joe loves that roosting bar. As you can see, we've even got another barred rock here. I'm so glad I didn't throw out this old desk. Well, not throw it out completely. It's one of their favorite roosting bars. And by the way, in terms of chicken plants, plants which can weather the storm of a chicken's constant pecking and insatiable thirst for vegetation, the cardboard plant is one of them. Yeah. How are you doing there? What a pretty chicken you are. Who would have thought I'd have chickens in my backyard? My worm farm, I'm in the process of revamping it. And I can see that my Grubterra worm supply is low. I need to refill that. Now, this is a relative of the cardboard plant, a zamia. It's actually a Florida edible. People eat the roots of this thing. Um, another really cool plant. This one might make it back there, and I might plant some of these back there as well. Just so I have a higher odds of something like that making it than the uh, anything that they would prefer to eat. They just It's too hard for them to successfully destroy. But yeah, these chickens are eating a lot of bugs. How do I know that? Well, they're not eating a lot of chicken food. And in fact, we're giving them guilty pleasures too. They actually had a slice of pizza last night. Make you pizza birds, you won't be good permaculture birds, right? No, they'll, they'll still eat anything. But you can tell by their feathers how shiny and healthy they look. 
I tried to get them out and exposed to the natural bacterias and ecosystem of the yard when they were very young, but from what I read, that, generally speaking, encourages a much stronger immune system in chickens. But they've just been very, very healthy. I might, I might change their chicken bedding today. It's getting a little bit dirty. You can see they love the uh, chicken leaves, <laughs> the mango leaves. Sitting high on the roost up there, Ponzi. Coincidence that the top hen is on the top roosting bar? Probably not. They get to spread their legs all afternoon long. So I'm deciding which way to go on the channel. I was thinking of new content since we've got a bunch of people on the live stream now. This would be a good time to bring out the uh, bring up the topic, which would be I'll bring up a, a few areas that I've been thinking about. I like to switch it up on the channel, keep it new and fun for me too, and. Uh, I was thinking of a few categories. The first category was, let me know what you think about these. First one was palm trees, highlighting different how to grow, how to grow videos on palm trees around the area. Yeah, I've done a fair amount of those before, but I thought maybe I would do a, a complete set of all the palm trees that I recommend and like the most and how to grow them and maybe even start growing them in seeds and have that you know, in the, on the grow table over there. And uh, we could tr and track that as well. All right, so that's one idea. A palm tree growing series. That seemed like it'd be fun to do. And then another idea is to have a similar kind of thing, but just with fruit trees to really deep dive into collections of fruit trees, how to grow them, you know, have a kind of a formula of, of uh, that. And then in the end, get one started in a pot that we track along on the channel. That was another idea, you know, general fruit tree, how to grow fruit trees series, longer form content type stuff. And then the third option was to start doing some podcasts and invite people on different permaculture, food channels, food forests, homesteading, prepping, you know, whatever kinds of things that are generally related to this channel on podcasts. Uh, that would be fun. I've done that on some of my other channels and I love to do that where I meet new people and learn, make kind of make connections. That's a good permaculture thing too, is where you see yourself as part of a node in a network where you are connecting with other people in your, especially in your local community, but I think it can go much wider than that so that you uh, set up systems that serve everybody. So that was the third idea was podcast. So let me know down in the comments or in, in the comments for the on, the, on the stream right now, what you think of those ideas, which one you might prefer to see content in. Also, let me know what you think of the shorts that I've been uh, putting out, the YouTube shorts videos, which are the minute or less. Some of them are 15 second music videos. Some of them are minute long about. So I've been doing a number of those. Let me know what you think of those. Decide to do one every day. I've been doing just about one a day. Uh, you, know, you can schedule them so I can make them and then schedule them so that there's a pretty steady flow of content. Uh, so mix them up that way. I've always got a thousand things I'm thinking about and this provides me an easy way to, to turn them into something. Yee chick chick. Yee chick chick. Yee chick chick. They don't know where I am. Yee chick chick. Can't believe they didn't come. They're frozen back there. Still, I think they're trying to figure out where I am. This is where I normally do. Oh, they're still up there. What are you saying? I'm not coming down for... Actually, I, I'm glad you didn't come down. Just stay up there. Isn't that cool how they can have the natural roosting bars, too? I saw a really cool thing over at Rockledge Gardens yesterday, which is this local nursery I like a lot. They always have creative, cool ideas, and they had a like a six by six with a bunch of oak branches that had been 
uh, cut diagonally and then screwed in with a big screw so that it created, well, it looked like it created a thing where you could hang pots on or maybe use as a trellis, but I was thinking of making one like that, but for the chickens as a roosting bar. So I don't know, I might, I might do something like that. I like doing little wood, woodworking projects like that and I've certainly got enough wood to do that. And I also have a number two by twos that are just calling my name out. So I, I was contemplating doing a chicken tractor or a rabbit tractor that I could move around the yard, get the rabbits even more time out of the cage, put them in the shady parts in the afternoon and stuff. And so I might still do that, but also thinking about going into a more elaborate roosting bar setup for the little hens. Very nice. Uh, by the way, I got some really good hurricane surf videos not too long ago. Put them on the Surf All Day A1A channel that I have. Also started a new music channel called Jedi Jingle Maker. If you're interested in seeing my my original music that I make, go there and please subscribe. You would be probably the fourth subscriber if you subscribed right now because uh, it just started. And I love to make music, so that's another area I'll be posting a lot of content on uh, and probably combining it with some of the drone video that I do. So if you like tropical ocean type stuff and original music, well, I guess that's a place you could go. All right. So thanks for watching. Eat Your Backyard, jumping on this Sunday morning live stream. I'm going to go ahead and refill my coffee cup and make elaborate plans for today. Uh, please leave me lots of comments and let me know what you're thinking, what you think of this stuff, if it helped you at all, what you're doing in your world, and how things are going. As usual, I wish you continuing prosperity and success in every single thing you do, and I hope you have a terrific day today. May the force be with you. Don't forget, Yoda was also anxious. Have a great day.